So following on from the video I did a couple of weeks ago, the funk rhythm guitar workout, I'm once again finding myself in a funky kind of mood and thought I'd look at a track by the band The Meters. Now if you don't know The Meters you might well have heard their track Sissy Strut which is the one that goes like this. Um... probably their best known track. Now I could have done a video on that, I still can do a video on that if you'd like me to, but I thought that was perhaps a slightly too obvious choice. I'm sure there are other great lessons out there on that one. So I've gone with the next most obvious choice which is the track Look at Pi Pi and that track is taken from the album of the same name. I think this is their second album and if you don't know this one it's highly recommended. Now before we go any further let me just have a bit of a play, you can hear what we're dealing with today then I will take you through what's going on. So there we have it and one of the good things about meters tracks I think is that they're all pretty simple. I mean this one is just two riffs and then a little bit of comping during the solo section and that means you can pick them up very very quickly and then you can focus on the most important thing which is timing and groove and feel. And I really can't think of a better way of improving your feel than by working on one or two meters tracks. I think you can take some really valuable lessons from this kind of thing that you can apply to any other style of music. So let's take a look. Let's kick off with the main riff then, the one that goes like this. And this riff is all based around a G7, G dominant kind of a sound. We've got a big G7 chord in there and the single notes from the riff could be seen as coming from the G minor pentatonic scale and we've got a couple of extra notes added in there as well. So let's start with this. We've got a D note which is the 5th fret on the A string, moving to F at the 3rd fret on the D string. We've got an open D string and then this G at the 5th fret on the D string. Uh, when I first figured it out I thought it was both of those Ds played at the 5th fret on the A string, but if you listen closely you can just detect an open string in there and I actually think that does make a difference. It makes the, the whole riff feel and flow a little bit better I think. So those first few notes are really a pickup phrase. So they're coming in just before the downbeat proper. So we've got one, two, three, four. So this G is actually beat one. So I guess we're coming in on the the four E. So it's one, two, three, four E and a one. And then we have this. It's a double stop, third fret on the G and the B. And I'm hammering down onto this B note which is the fourth fret on the G string. Coming back to this G. We've got these kind of funky chord hits. So I'm holding down this big G7 voicing. So I'm barring at the third fret. I've got the fifth fret on the A, fourth fret on the G, and my little finger is playing the sixth fret on the B string. And even though I'm not sounding or playing all of the notes in that chord, I think it makes sense to hold down this voicing. I'm really just emphasizing the higher notes in this voicing, and I'm just playing playing those three times. So 
So that's really the first half of the riff. That's the question, if you like. And then the answering phrase is the bit that goes like this. So we've got some more single notes. We've got D, F, and that open D again. Then we've got a descending run. So it's G, F, D. Onto the low E string, we've got F sharp moving up to the root G. So that's the second half of the riff. And then those same G7 chord hits. So if I put all of that together, we've got one, two, three, four. So those are the notes. I think the toughest thing about this is the rhythm and also deciding how you're going to pick it with your picking hand. Now, for the rhythm, I'm going to cop out a little bit. and I'm going to suggest the most important thing you can do is just to listen to the recording and try and soak up the rhythm and soak up the feel. I, mean, I could go through this and count out all the one eander, two eander stuff, but I'm not sure exactly how helpful that would be. So I think listen closely. Um, I'm going to put a tab up on my Patreon page if it's helpful to see this stuff written down. But I think that's the best way to get these quite complex, funky rhythms. Now, as far as the picking goes, I used to be of the school of thought that with funk stuff based on 16th notes, then your picking hand should be moving in that 16th note grid. So one E and a two E and a, just like in the, the funk workout video I did the other week. And that approach does work very well. But the more I look at really funky players and watch their picking hands, you see that it's not quite as consistent as that and they very often depart from that 16th note grid if they want to emphasize certain notes or if they just want to make a part flow in a certain way so uh, with this particular riff I don't think there's a right or wrong way to do it I'll take you through how I'm picking it uh, and I'm actually starting with a downstroke even though it's on the 4e um, 16th note subdivision just because I think starting the riff with a downstroke gives it just a, a nicer accent so I'm actually going down down up down 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 so lots of downstrokes there which I think is important for the attitude and the, the accents in this riff and then we've got the G7 stuff uh, and that is going with the 16th note grid so I've got playing those with an up, up and a down. And then down, down, up, down, up, down, down, down. So again, I've got more down strokes in there and I like to end the riff very definitely with those two down strokes. So just slowly so you can see my picking hand here, we've got So that's how I do it. Not the only way you can pick this riff by any means. And I suggest you just play around and find what works for you. And to be honest, I've got no idea how Meters guitarist Leo Nocentelli picks this. I couldn't find any clear footage of him playing this particular song. But uh, watching him play other stuff, it's not necessarily just this down up, down up 16th note stuff. He sort of varies that to accent his riffs in particular ways. On to the next riff then, and that's the one that goes like this. So we're actually moving everything down two frets here to F for this riff. And this particular riff is actually very reminiscent of the Sissy Strut riff, I think. We've got it's F, E flat, C, E flat, F. And then we've got this lovely sixth based fill. So this is these Mixolydian sixths that I've spoken about in a previous video and we've got this kind of figure. So it's the first fret on the D and the B, sliding that up two frets and then I'm catching this high F with my first finger and then going back to that first double stop shape. I 
I'm playing this with hybrid picking. Um, I'm fairly sure this is what Leo Nocentelli does when he plays it. I think it's the only way to get this, this kind of thing clean. So I'm picking the note on the D string with my pick and on the B string with the middle finger of my picking hand. That's my middle finger as well. And then pick and fingers for that double stop there. So. That's riff two. And then all we've really got left is the comping part underneath the organ solo. And that goes something like this. So we're back to G7 here and back to this G7 bar chord voicing and it's a fairly standard 16th note funk rhythm part and the actual part that I'm hearing on the recording is this. I think I played it slightly differently to this in the performance at the start of this video but it's a part that you can kind of improvise and play around with if you want to but if you want the exact rhythm then it's you're playing a bass note and then it's down up, up, down, up, bass note, and then a chord hit. And then we've got this little six move. And that's exactly the same as we had in the F section in the second riff, but we've moved that two frets higher. So we're now sliding up to the fifth fret, catching this G, and then coming back down to the third fret. With hybrid picking. Now I think the most important thing here with this G7 bar chord, and this applies to the main riff as well, is just to have a really light touch with your fretting hand. You barely need to fret these notes at all and then you get a nice percussive sound. You don't want to be really squeezing down that chord too much. Just I'm not even fretting those notes properly at all sometimes and you just get that really nice dead percussive sound. So that's about it and overall it's a very simple song but the difficult thing I think is getting that feel and that groove and that's something that's much more mysterious and it's hard to teach and it's just something you have to pick up I think by listening to the recording. Um, I mean, It's just up to do with the precise placement of some of those notes and it's not sort of all aligned to a 16th note grid like you'd find inside a computer. There's a slight swing to some of those notes and it's not something you can really verbalise, it's just something you have to try and feel. So uh, <laughs> I wish you luck with that. So let me take you through the gear that I'm using today. Now, Meter's guitarist, a man called Leo Nocentelli, most commonly seen using a Gibson 335 or a guitar of that kind. Now, that's not a guitar that I currently own, it's a guitar that I must have very soon. So I'm just using the gear that I've got to hand and today I've gone for the Shergold Provocateur. Uh, it's not simply because it's my newest guitar and I wanted to use it, or maybe there's a little bit of that going on, but it did seem to be the best tone out of all my guitars today for this particular song. And you listen to the Leo Nocentelli tone and it's not your typical single coil Strat funk sound, it's a bit fatter than that. So I wanted something with humbuckers, so I'm actually today using the middle position of the pickup selector on the Provocateur, it's the, the humbucker and the P90 all together, and that seemed to work really well for this particular song. Amp-wise today I'm using the Vox AC30 and I'm using a couple of pedals as well. I'm using the J-Rocket Archer pedal, that's an overdrive pedal. Not really using it for overdrive, more just to warm up the sound a little bit. And I'm also getting some reverb from the Surfy Bear reverb unit. Again, this is perhaps not an obvious choice for a funk tune, but uh, despite the name, I think the Surfy Bear works really well for a whole range of different styles. And I've got it dialed in fairly subtly. I'm obviously not going for the big splashy Surfy sound on this track. It's more of a, a subtle reverb. So I've, I've pulled down the mix control and the dwell control, and I think it works really well in this kind of context. Well, that's about all we have time for today. As usual, the tab and the backing track is going to be up on my Patreon page. Put together a super funky backing track. It's about as funky as I can make it by nudging MIDI drum samples around inside a 
digital audio workstation but um, it's, it's fun to play along with so check that out if you're interested. I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.